<clears throat> okay, we're all set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call these cases separately. Um, I'm going to call start starting with uh, People versus Jennifer Crumbly, docket number 21006652. Can I have appearances on the record starting with the prosecutor? Karen McDonald on behalf of the people of the state of Michigan. Mark Keast on behalf of the people. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Shannon Smith on behalf of Jennifer Crumbly. Good morning, Your Honor. Marielle Lehman on behalf of James Crumbly. I do want to address one issue first. Um, Ms. Lehman and Ms. Smith, um, you are practicing in the same firm, is that correct? Your Honor, that's correct. We have spoken to both of our clients about conflicts of interest. We have had in-depth conversations with them. Um, Marielle Lehman and I are representing both of them. We are representing James and Jennifer, and the conflict of interest um, question or issue has been very much discussed and resolved. And we believe at this time, ethically and professionally, we can continue on in this fashion. Okay, well, as you know, pursuant to MCR 6.005, subsection F1, you must state on the record the reasons that you believe joint representation in all probability will not cause a conflict of interest. So please state that for the record in accordance with the court rule. Thank you, Your Honor. After reviewing uh, the circumstances and facts of the case, and um, one of the things I need to make clear is that the media has very much been saturated with cherry-picked facts. But when we have talked to our clients in depth, and learned all of the circumstances of the case, which obviously are covered by attorney-client privilege, there is not a conflict of interest between what happened. Without, I cannot divulge to you the specific reasons, but there is not a conflict of interest um, between the parents, their defense, um, and their defense strategy. Um, prosecutor, any uh, comments or statements you want to make relative to any potential conflicts of interest? Uh, Your Honor, I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure that there's any facts that have been placed on the record that that meets the standard. I, I'm not saying that I object, but I, I'm not sure that we have um, satisfied the court rule. Um, but I'm, if, if Mr. Keese has something to add, I'm I, I am required to uh, inquire as to each defendant as well. Um, Jennifer Crumbly, do you have any objection to Ms. Lehman and Ms. Smith representing both you and Mr. Crumbly for this case, recognizing um, that uh, they come from the same firm and they will be representing both of you? I have no objection. Uh, Mr. Crumbly, likewise for you. Do you have any objection to both Ms. Lehman and Ms. Smith representing both you and Ms. Crumbly as it relates to this particular case? No objection, Your Honor. Do either of you have any questions or concerns about a potential conflict of interest? Mr. Crumbly? No. Ms. Crumbly? No. Okay. At this point, the court is satisfied that um, the both of the defendants um, are comfortable with both attorneys representing them in this case. The attorneys have indicated on the record that they do not believe that there is a conflict of interest and that they have spoken with both defendants in depth relative to any potential conflict of interest and whether or not their representation may jeopardize the right of each defendant to have the undivided loyalty of their lawyers. Therefore, the court will allow them to appear for purposes of the arraignment today um, on behalf of both defendants. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Now, uh, in terms of the arraignment, Jennifer Crumbly, I'm going to arraign you first. So if you'll please make sure you get close to that microphone so that we can hear you. If at any time you cannot hear or see me, please put your hand up. And we will stop the proceedings and then try to figure out what's going on. Do you understand that you are charged with the following counts? Count one, involuntary manslaughter which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and or to a $7,500 fine and mandatory DNA for the death of Madison Baldwin. Do you understand that, Gerald? Do you understand that that is a charge for count one? Ms. Crumbly, you need to refer 
I understand. I understand. You understand that you are charged in count two for the death of Tate Meyer, involuntary manslaughter, which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and or up to a $7,500 fine and mandatory DNA. I understand. Do you understand that you are charged in count three for the death of Hannah St. Juliana with involuntary manslaughter, which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and or up to a $7,500 fine along with mandatory DNA testing? I understand. Do you understand that you're charged in count four for the death of Justin Schilling with involuntary manslaughter, which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and or up to $7,500 Fine, along with mandatory DNA testing. Understand. Do you understand that you do have the right to plead guilty or not guilty to all those counts? I understand. And do you understand that you do have a right to a trial, either by jury or by judge? And at that trial, you would have the opportunity to call witnesses on your behalf, confront witnesses that have been called against you, and or to remain silent, and that you'd be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand all those trial rights? Yes, Your Honor. Are you on probation or parole for no. any other offense? No. Ma'am, I'll ask the question again. Are you on probation or parole no. for any offense? No. And how are you pleading to count one? Not guilty. How are you pleading to count two? Not guilty. How are you pleading to count three? Not guilty. How are you pleading to count four? Not guilty. The court will enter the pleas of not guilty for you for all four counts. Um, the court will set the probable cause conference, which is going to be on December 14th. Uh, Amy, what time do we have that one? Uh, you could do nine. That is December 14th at 1.15 p.m. The preliminary examination is scheduled for December 22nd at 9.45 a.m. Those will be in-person hearings. Your Honor, um, just as a matter for our file, are you assigned for the purpose of exam and the pre-exam, or is it a is it a different judge within the court? It is me. The okay, per case is perfect. To me. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I'm going to address bond in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and um, arraign Mr. James Crombley first. Mr. Thank James you. James Crombley, see, see and hear the court will pay. Yes. And do you understand, sir, that you are charged um, in count one for the death of Madison Baldwin of involuntary manslaughter, which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and or up to a $7,500 fine and mandatory DNA testing? I understand. Do you understand in count two, you are charged with the death of Tate Meyer for the involuntary manslaughter, which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and or up to a $7,500 fine and mandatory DNA testing? I understand. Do you understand that you are charged in count three for the death of Hannah St. Juliana um, with the involuntary manslaughter, which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and up to a $7,500 fine and mandatory DNA testing? I understand. And do you understand that you are charged in count four for the death of Justin Schilling um, involuntary manslaughter, which is punishable by up to 15 years in prison and or up to a $7,500 fine and mandatory DNA testing. I understand. Do you understand that you do have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to all of those charges? I understand. Do you understand you have a right to a trial either by jury or by judge? And at that trial, you would have the opportunity to call witnesses on your behalf, confront witnesses that have been called against you and or to remain silent and that you'd be presumed um, not guilty until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt for each and every element of the crime. Do you understand those trial rights? I understand. Are you on probation or parole for any other offense? No. How are you pleading to count one? Not guilty. How are you pleading to count two? Not guilty. How are you pleading to count three? Not guilty. And how are you pleading to count four? Not guilty. 
Again, the court will accept the plea of uh, not guilty for all four counts. This your case will also be scheduled for a probable cause conference on December 14th at 1.15 and a preliminary examination on December 22nd at 9.45 a.m. At this point, I'm going to address bond. Um, first, I'd like to hear from pretrial services. Thank you, Your Honor. Jeffrey Reckon for pretrial services. Uh, Ms. Gardner declined to speak with pretrial services and, respect, and request to speak with her attorney. As a result, no references were contacted and little background information is available. She's 43 years old and married. Her listed address with the jail is 112 East Street in Oxford, Michigan. Uh, she does not have any, she does have a prior criminal history. Uh, she uh, is not currently on probation or parole. She does not have a history of failing to appear. She does not have a prior documented history of violence. Uh, the charges against the defendant are severe, and are those charges uh, issued by the court. Defendant, along with the co-defendant, failed to turn himself into authorities. While well, every defendant is afforded the presumption of innocence, the purpose of bail is to ensure appearance and the safety of the community. Uh, defendants in this matter had agreed through their attorney to turn themselves in to the court once charges were issued on 12-3 of 21. However, instead they fled. Based on the defendant's attempt to flee prosecution, Pretrial services has concerns for appearance and the safety of their public. It is our recommendation that a release on recognizance bail is not appropriate in this case. Uh, in order to further mitigate concerns for appearance and public safety, if the defendant makes release, the following conditions are respectfully recommended. Pretrial services supervision, the GPS tether prior to release, allowed to leave home for work if employed, medical appointments, attorney visits, uh, not to have any contact with any witnesses, victims, or return to Oxford High School, not to possess a firearm, and uh, must turn any firearms in that have not been confiscated. Thank you. Um, who is going to speak on behalf of the prosecutor's office? I am, Your Honor. Go ahead. Your Honor, I, I'm sure you've read the swear to you. Um, pursuant to MCR 6.106, uh, bond should be set with the considerations of the likelihood of conviction first. Here, the likelihood of conviction is strong. Your Honor, uh, we know from mm -hmm. the facts and that were presented at the swear to you that uh, the Crumbleys, Mr. Crumbley, purchased this weapon for his son um, and that on the 27th, the, the uh, Mrs. Crumbley mm -hmm. went to the shooting range with her son, posted on social media saying that it was a mother Sunday and that she was um, she bought a weapon for her, a, a gun for her baby for Christmas. Uh, it, it's also clear from the facts that he had um, total access to this weapon and that it was it was for him. Uh, second, on the 29th, both defendants were aware that he was searching ammunition um, on his phone at school. Instead of um, reacting to that as a concerned parent and worried about safety, uh, Mrs. Crumbly texted, LOL, <clears throat> just, I'm not mad, just next time don't get caught. Um, and then, obviously, on this very tragic day, on the 30th, they were called to the school and about their uh, son's uh, um, drawing, which clearly depict, depicted threats and acts of violence. And instead of disclosing to the school that he had full access to this weapon, they chose not to. They chose not to take their son home. They chose not to tell anybody that he might be dangerous when it was clear and they had every likelihood that, that he was, and instead they left. Um, furthermore, after the active shooting announcement went out, Mrs. Crumbly texted her son, Ethan, don't, get, don't do it. And Mr. Crumbly went to his home purposely to search for this weapon because he was afraid his son had the weapon and was in fact shooting people and hurting them, which as we know is exactly what happened. Your Honor, this is a very serious, horrible, terrible murder and shooting, and it has affected the entire community. And these two individuals could have stopped it. And they had every reason to know that he was dangerous and they gave him a weapon and they didn't secure it and they allowed him free access to it. Furthermore, Your Honor, uh, the purpose of bond is to secure further court appearances. And yesterday uh, they were charged with these counts of mans voluntary manslaughter uh, now, Your Honor, the the communication between Mrs. Smith and the prosecutor's office was a text message that uh, was sent to me and was um, not replied to. Um, and you know, we don't have an obligation 
have to cooperate, and there are good reasons for that. And I think they, the, the fact that the, the events that played out show the reasons for that. Now, Mrs. Smith, clearly her clients did not give her, tell her the truth because her representation was they wanted to turn themselves in and that they were um, on their way to do that. Um, however, they didn't turn themselves in and uh, we were told they were out of town, except that yesterday morning they withdrew uh, $4,000 from an ATM in Rochester Hills, uh, very close to the court where they could have turned themselves in with no um, events and no uh, um, efforts on behalf of law, law enforcement. Instead, they fled and they, they saw multiple attempts to hide their location and were eventually tracked down after they uh, parked their car somewhere, a witness saw it, and the entire fugitive apprehension team with multiple other law enforcement agencies went into a uh, vacant building and searched it from top to bottom. And these two individuals were found locked somewhere in a room hiding. These are not people that we can be assured will return to court um, on their own. And then lastly, pursuant to MCR 6.106, we also should consider, or the court should consider, um, whether or not there are members of the community to vouch. There are none here. In fact, there are none here because there are there is not one person in that community that will vouch for these two defendants. So I'm asking that you set a $500,000 bond for both defendants, cash surety. Um, let's, uh, I'd like to hear from the attorneys, uh, please address bond as it relates to Jennifer Crumbly first place. Um, your honor, the first thing I need to do is to respond to the prosecution's comments about our contact with their office. On Thursday night, I texted Karen McDonald and told her my office was representing the Crumbleys and we, and I wanted to speak with her. She did text back and said, we could talk first thing Friday morning. First thing Friday morning, I did text Miss McDonald. I also group texted Miss McDonald with Mario Lehman. I also called her office. I talked to her personal secretary and explained who I was, the circumstances, and that I needed to speak with Miss McDonald. Marielle Lehman also called Miss McDonald in the morning. We called the prosecutor's office throughout the day and never got a call back. We were going to make arrangements to have our clients turn themselves in. I was in a trial in circuit court in front of Judge Saban all day yesterday. Miss Lehman was traveling on a plane from Florida up to Michigan. The prosecutor's office, instead of getting back to us in any way, decided to have a press conference and, as Miss McDonald admitted, try to find a way to, uh, to surprise our clients and catch them off guard when it was so unnecessary. And last night and throughout the day, we were in contact with our clients. They, they were scared, they were terrified, they were not at home, they were figuring out what to do, getting finances in order. And the last text messages we had with them and phone calls Marielle Lehman and I had with them, our plan was to drive to the Novi District Court this morning because arraignments were supposed to start at 8.30 for any county arraignment. And we had plans to meet them at 7.30 to text the fugitive apprehension team to get to the court by 8.30 so they could be arraigned first thing. Those were plans we made and solidified and we did not announce it because unlike the prosecution, we weren't attempting to make this a media, a media spectacle. This case is absolutely the saddest, most tragic, worst case imaginable. There is absolutely no doubt, but our clients were absolutely going to turn themselves in. It was just a matter of logistics and all the prosecution had to do was communicate with me about it. And we tried multiple times. All right, that being said, with respect to Ms. Um, Crumbly, she is 43 years old as pretrial services told you. She has been employed as the director of a large um, company, director of marketing. Um, she is a, she grew up in Clarkston 
prior to living in Oxford, where they've owned their home since 2015, she lived in Lake Orion. She has never been in serious trouble with the law. She does have a drunk driving conviction back from when she was in college. Any conviction on Ms. Crumbly's record is a misdemeanor and, and is old. Um, Ms. Crumbly has um, retained my office in Marielle, obviously. She would not have done that had she planned to not turn herself in and fight these charges. I'm quite certain they would not have paid my office money and, and taken those steps if they were not going to fight these charges. When it comes to the seriousness of the offense, when you listen to the prosecution's facts they're presenting, which are incomplete, very incomplete, it does sound like an, an absolutely egregious uh, wrongdoing on the part of Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly that they, that they gave their child a gun and encouraged him to do this. That's just not the case. And Mrs. Crumbly is presumed innocent. And I asked this court to know that, to note that full discovery has not been available and that the court is only aware of the facts the prosecution has presented, but that gun was actually locked. So when the prosecution is stating that this child had free access to a gun, that is just absolutely not true. And we need an opportunity to fight this case in court and not in the court of public opinion. We need the opportunity to have our clients' constitutional rights to being presumed innocent protected. And this court is going to see um, in the exam in particular that there is far more going on than what this court has been made aware of. And for that reason, Your Honor, I would ask this court to set bond, keeping all of that in mind. Our clients would absolutely be avail themselves to a GPS tether. They would absolutely obey all of the conditions listed by pretrial services. This case does not warrant a $500,000 bond. I would ask this court, in light of the criminal history, the limited facts um, presented, to order that the bond be set at $50,000 um, or $100,000 if this court believes it needs to be more. Um, our clients are going to fight these charges. Our clients are just as devastated as everyone else. Um, bond has to come from a place of legal soundness, not emotional reaction, which has driven this entire case. And it is emotionally charged. It is emotionally the worst thing I have ever been involved with and seen. There is no doubt it is the worst thing the Crumbleys have ever been involved with and seen. And there is just so much going on here and we ask the court to set a reasonable bond. Um, any additional comments as it relates to James Crumbly? Yes, Your Honor. Um, James is 45 years old. He has a prior um, conviction from 2004. Again, similar to Jennifer Crumbly, any convictions that he has would have been, um, we believe that they were misdemeanors. He does not have any substance abuse issues. He does have some health issues that require, um, he's diabetic that require two types of insulin. He was gainfully employed. Um, he's been in, in Michigan since he and Jennifer moved up here several, several years ago. Um, as for the seriousness of the charges, as Ms. Smith has stated, the facts that have, that have been presented by Ms. McDonald and her office have been cherry picked to further her narrative of making an example of Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly, which she very freely said she was doing yesterday during her press conference. Again, to echo what Ms. Smith has said, I personally contacted Ms. McDonald's office to notify her of mine and Ms. Smith's availability. She chose not to call us back. I was also in communication with law enforcement, as was Ms. Smith. They knew that we were planning to bring Mr. and Mrs. Crumbly in. They knew that we were in communication with them, contrary to what was presented in the media. Um, Your Honor, they hired our office on Thursday. They have been, we are prepared to defend this case. They are absolutely taking this case seriously. They are devastated by the events in the Oxford, um, in the Oxford incident. Um, this is not something that's being taken lightly by them or us, Your Honor. I agree with Ms. Smith, $500,000 is not warranted in this case. The charges are very seriously, but as the court is aware, they are allegations at this point. 
As Ms. Smith has stated, both of our clients are presumed innocent unless they're proven guilty, um, Your Honor. And quite frankly, from what we know, Your Honor, the facts are not what they've been presented to the court and to the public. So I, I, I again echo what Ms. Smith indicated. Our clients are more than happy to um, have a GPS tether to be on pretrial, pretrial services supervision. I am, re again, requesting a $50,000 or $100,000 bond. But Mr. Crumbly, as with Mrs. Crumbly, is not a flight risk. She is not a, he is not a danger to the community. There is no risk that they're going to flee prosecution. They were never fleeing prosecution. I want to make that very clear with the court. We had been in communication with the prosecutor's office and law enforcement and our clients throughout yesterday, Your Honor. They were not fleeing prosecution, contrary to the media reports. Um, so, Your Honor, I'm asking that they have a $50,000 or $100,000 bond with a GPS tether and pretrial services supervision. Your Honor, may I respond, please? Very, very quickly, please. Your Honor, um, I agree with Mrs. Smith on one thing. The court hasn't heard all the facts, and neither has the public, because I have an ethical duty not to release those facts, because she is indeed correct. Her client and um, Mr. Crumbly have a, um, an absolute, um, we have a burden, and they, they these are merely allegations. So I agree. And I just want to point out, um, nobody needs permission these, these defendants did not need my permission and they didn't need law enforcement permission to go to the court and turn themselves in, go to the police department, the sheriff's department, and turn themselves in. I agree Mrs. Smith was, was perhaps in trial. She had a break from 1145 to 245, and I can't imagine why they were surprised. The, the whole country knew that these charges were coming. And lastly, to suggest that this anyone has somehow using this incident to, um, to create press there's a lot of attention here because four children were murdered and seven others were injured. And that that is on the mind of every single person in this country. So I would ask that you impose the $500,000 cash surety on each of the defendants, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, so in terms of bond, if the court is required to comply with MCR 6.106, the purpose of bond is to ensure that the, uh, the defendants appear in court for all necessary court appearances, as well as uh, to take into consideration any risk to public safety. Um, obviously, these charges are very, very serious. There's no question about that. Um, there is a, there's, the court does have some concern about the flight risk along with the public safety, given the circumstances that occurred yesterday and the fact that the defendants did have to be apprehended um, in order to appear for purposes of arraignment. The court did indicate yesterday after the swear to that it would be conducting an arraignment at 4 p.m. Um, and nobody appeared for purposes of that arraignment. Your so Honor, I, if, Your Honor, I may, if you see the, the bond for Jennifer Crumbly at $500,000 cash surety, no 10%. In the event that Jennifer Crumbly is able to post bond, the following conditions will, uh, will be in place. The defendant is not to use or test positive for alcohol, recreational marijuana, or any controlled substances. Um, Ms. Crumbly is not to possess or have in her possession any firearms, um, or dangerous weapons, shall not have any assaultive behavior toward anyone, must provide a release address upon release to the pretrial services um, representative. The uh, pretrial services representative will be monitoring bond compliance. The defendant upon within 24 hours of release from the Oakland County Jail must submit to and pay for ETG, PBT, or urinalysis um, at a facility that's open seven days a week that automatically lab confirms all positives, provides all levels in writing, um, that would be at the direction of PTS. The, the defendant, Ms. Crumbly, at this time is to verify any employment status um, and verify that in writing upon release from the Oakland County Jail. In the event that the defendant, Ms. Crumbly, is able to post a bond, the court is going to require that she have a GPS tether. Um, the GPS tether upon, must be installed upon release um, from the Oakland County Jail. She may be... The GPS tether will have the allowances that she could um, go to work, attend court hearings, medical appointments, and attorney meetings. She must provide work schedule, medical appointments, and any meetings to PTS in advance. Again, that must be installed at the jail before she leaves the jail. As it relates to James Robert Crumbly, the court is setting a $500,000 cash surety, no 10% ban. Um, the defendant is not to use or test positive for alcohol, recreational marijuana, or any controlled substances. 
The defendant does not possess or have in his possession any firearms, weapons, or ammunition. The defendant is not to have assaultive behavior toward anyone. The defendant must provide a release address if he is able to post bond to pretrial services. He will be monitored by pretrial services, must submit and pay for ETG, PBT, and a urinalysis within 24 hours of release from the Oakland County Jail at a facility that is open seven days a week that automatically lab confirms all positives, provides all levels in writing. The defendant must verify employment to PTS upon release from the Oakland County Jail. The GPS tether must be installed prior to release from the Oakland County Jail in the event that the defendant is able to post bond. He also must provide information relative to employment schedule, medical appointments, or any other appointments that are allowed, which will include he could attend court hearings, employment, medical appointments, and attorney meetings. Any violations of any of the terms and conditions of those bond may result in revocation of bond. Any questions as it relates to bond for James Crumley? Your Honor, we have no questions, but I do need to place one thing on the record. I'm not asking the court to change anything. What I want to state on the record is I was not able to watch the entire press release and what the, I had no idea there was a four o'clock arraignment. Ms. Lehman didn't know either. The media had so many reports of random times that quite frankly, we didn't believe. We're not going to get into. I just want to apologize to the court because we weren't aware. And also we faxed over appearances and no one told us like, hey, we're going to do this at four o'clock. We sent appearances late in the day. And I, I just apologize to this court because we don't miss date. So thank you. Thank you. Finally, as it relates to bond, the, in the event that the defendants do post bond, I am requiring that they turn over any and all weapons to the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. That must occur within, realistically, I'm not sure what they have in their possession or if they're going to be able to be, where they're going to be released to if they post bond, but I am going to require that they turn over all weapons upon release from the Oakland County Jail. Okay. Any other questions? No, thank you. No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Again, the PCC is on the 14th at 115. Preliminary examination is on the 22nd at 945 a.m. It will be in-person proceedings. Please make sure that you are prepared with all witnesses and or exhibits. Your Honor, I just do want to put on the record that there are hundreds and hundreds of hours of digital evidence and voluminous documents, and we are compiling it and we'll get it to defense counsel as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a nice day. Thank you, Judge. Your Honor.